Hey guys, Clade here, back with another commentary video, this time on Mythic Botanist. The biggest thing that's different between Mythic Botanist and other versions is that you're going to get all three bosses at the same time, and you actually have to burst each of the guys down one at a time. Once you kill one of them, the other two is going to heal to full HP, so there's really absolutely zero point in doing any AoE on this fight. And unfortunately, uh, that of course does weaken the power of Draft of Souls because you can see in the, in the beginning there, I do Draft of Souls, but who knows how many actually hit the skull target um, because the problem is any damage that I do to the other two uh, is essentially wasted. So you'll see that on these fights, I'm very rarely using Whirlwind. Uh, I'm only going to use Whirlwind if there's some other type of adds that are next to the bosses, uh, like the Lashers or the orbs that they're going to summon. Uh, so the kill order that I think most guilds do is the Naturalist, Arcanist, and Solarist. So the order just NAS. Um, for pretty much every guild that I think, uh, they do the same order. Uh, I do help out with those Plasma Spheres, as you guys see in the melee, if they're ever there. But with the way that our current raid is set up and the way that this guild does the encounter, uh, most of the adds are taken care of by the ranged. And you'll see that be the case, especially further on uh, when it's more of the... Those orbs that you gotta kill, uh, our range does dictate who kills them um, since they can really pace them out perfectly so that way we're not taking you know all three orbs at the same time. So uh, it's pretty much single target patchwork fight for melee for us. Uh, I mean we just target down each of the guys and we make sure that you know the lasher is coming, they don't hit us. I do try when I do have Draft of Souls up. Do not use it on the naturalist. I didn't use my draft of souls right there right away, as you can see, because I, I had to wait for the that mechanic to come out in case that it was in melee, or in case that it would reach melee, which it did. Uh, so we would have to move out and move back in. You want to make sure you're not getting, you know, rooting yourself with your draft of souls, uh, just because there are mechanics. There's there's pretty much every single mechanic in this fight uh, requires some type of movement, right? Um, like the control chaos, you have to move out of the circles. Uh, and then you also have, what is that even called? Um, where they put like little ores around and pulse into the center. You also got to move for that, right? And the lasher is targeting you, you also have to move. So I do want, I do, you know, I'm very careful of where I'm going to be drafting just to make sure that a mechanic isn't going to come up, you know, and I'm going to be rooted in place. Because the worst thing you want to do when you're drafting is to be forcefully canceling it because you have to move. Um, that does feel very bad. So unfortunately, I didn't realize how this guild was going to do this encounter. The way that they were going to do it was very, um, you know, range-centric in killing the adds. So unfortunately, I did have War Machine up uh, during this encounter, and I don't get that many procs, so it was really not worth it for me. Um, so when we come back to this next week, I would definitely take Endless Rage for this fight, just because it's essentially, for me, or for this guild, for melee, it's essentially single target. Um, so there's really no point in me going with any build that involves killing ads. So of course, luckily, the Parasitic Lashers does spawn here with the orbs, right? So I was able to get, you know, extended uh, procs of War Machine, so that was nice. But that's pretty much the only part in the fight where I'm going to get that much War Machine. So, uh, pretty simple. After the first guy dies, the second guy is pretty much the same. The fight really changes once you kill two of the bosses, right? Once you kill Rus, once we kill the... Naturalist and Arcanist, uh, it's when it's just a Solaris, the fight changes a little bit. So for that, I just, that is more so familiarity with how the tanks and the raid, you know, moves out of mechanics. Uh, I think the previous guild I was in, they really like going clockwise, if it was ever, you know, the melee has to move, but it seems like for that, they went counterclockwise. Uh, and that just comes with playing with the group more and knowing, you know, when mechanics have to be moved, what direction your tanks are going. So right here. As I mentioned, if there's ever a Plasma Sphere in the melee, I mean, that's the one that most raids focus down anyways, just because you can have your melee help. Because uh, you want to kill that first orb essentially as fast as you can, right? So that way, you have as long as time you have to kill the other orbs. So unfortunately, somebody did get, looks like they got hit by Parasite last year because there was four adds kind of out there. Um, so unfortunately, I, did, I was targeted by one, so I went out of melee just to make sure that we weren't spawning more of those lashers. Uh, always, it's always just a lot of, there's a bit of movement uh, in the first parts of the fight where the first, as long as you're not on the third ad, uh, on the third boss, I mean. So, uh, the, those those little green spheres that you're seeing, uh, they will generally get soaked up by some kind of DPS that has a mechanic to remove them. So, as you can see, we have three rogues, so we have a lot of 
you know, avenues and ways of clearing those stacks. So, so obviously, if you're a Fury Warrior, you don't want to be taking those spheres because uh, we take more damage than everybody else, and that's just unnecessary damage that you know we're forcing the healers to heal through. So as much as you can, you do want to avoid those green spheres that are out there. Um, this Arcane is getting on pretty low. Unfortunately, this fight is essentially I would I would think one of the worst fights to showcase you know the power of Fury Warriors. Right? There's not there's not that much burst AOE. I mean, you might occasionally get two Lashers and a Sphere, and you, you know, if you perfectly have Odin's Fury up during that time, great for you. Um, but that's kind of hard to plan around and not necessary. Um, and then for the bosses, you're just single targeting, because right after that guy dies, this guy just healed at full HP, so any damage you've done was wasted. Um, luckily, the timing did work out for me really well for me to perfectly have Draft when it's just a Solaris, and that's where the power of Draft really comes in, is burning this last guy, right? Because every tick is going to hit him because he's the only target. So you guys will see, this is how we position the boss for phase 3. The melee essentially never moves in this fight. At, at this point, we'll just never move. You'll see the range go above us and below us on the map, and the, and they're going to summon those those little circles, and they're going to go in, and they'll never even be on melee at all. Um, unless, I guess, somebody dies, and then somebody messes on the mechanic. But as long as the mechanic is done right by the range, we literally, as made on this fight, never move again. Because uh, our bear tank is able to just take that, you know, that damage and not need to be dispelled for the rest of the fight. And then the other part why this fight isn't that great for Fury is that the execute phases are so short, right? You have three bosses, um, you know, that all die at different times. You're not able to get that many Juggernaut stacks. I think you'll see it at the end of the fight. I don't even think I reached 15 Juggernaut stacks. We'll see as we kind of finish off the fight. So right here, right, those orbs. Um, all done by range. The big, the other reason why you don't want melee going out there is that range can DPS all the orbs standing in the middle of the room like that, right? Whereas melee, we have to, you know, run through. We might hit a sphere, and that just doesn't. It's not that great. Uh, so having range kill the spheres is perfect. So we're getting close to the part fight. We do. We are having some people die off in the fight, but. I mean, you don't need everybody up for this phase. Uh, you pretty much just need the range that are doing the mechanics to do it. Also, a lot of guilds do sacrifice their ranged um, when they get that debuff. I forget what the name of it is. Um, you don't have to worry about it much as melee, um, but it's a, you know, that it's what causes this, those little circles of spheres that you know go in towards the center that we were seeing. Um, a lot of guilds just do sacrifice their ranged. I think this guild sacrifices the range after the first set. The first set, they still keep them alive. Um, but then after that set, it's pretty much if you get that mechanic on you, you just purposefully die. Because uh, it's not worth it to be keeping that guy alive. Um, because not, not only does that guy take more damage, that guy starts spawning more mechanics. So I think that's something that a mechanic that Blizzard can probably work on in the future. Is It feels really bad to do the mechanic where the way to do the mechanics to have your raider die. But anyways, we do manage to get uh, Bonus killed. I think this is everybody else's. They've all killed this multiple times, and this is my first time getting in the fight, just learning it. So next time I'm coming to the fight, I'll definitely come in with just pure single target talents. Um, and that's it for this video. As always, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more Fury Warrior content, and I'll have more commentaries. We're pretty close on Star Augur. Uh, our best pull was 3%, so hopefully a video for that will be out shortly. As always, thanks for watching, guys. See ya.